welcome once again to another episode of What Happened, the show that barrel rolls into games and movies with debilitating developmental drama. Now, that last one, drama, is not usually a word you'd use when talking about Nintendo. It, it, well, I mean, I mean, for, except for... And... And... Right, oh, okay, so they are not flawless. But when compared to many other companies we've discussed in the past, Nintendo's skeletons are few and far between. Or locked up by NDAs, most likely. One of their most recent misfires was 2016 Star Fox Zero, the most divisive game that the defenders of the Lilat system have had in a long, well, ever. What the heck is that? If I recall correctly, the last time Fox & Co. sailed the skies and stars on a Nintendo home console was 2005's Assault, followed by 2006's one and only DS outing, which then put the Corneria forces back into cryo sleep for another five years. When Star Fox 64 hit the 3DS in 2011, well, it actually did very well for Nintendo and kicked off a small resurgence for the plucky crew of Little Animal Space Warriors. Unfortunately, the big game that resulted in was its Wii U entry, which shot down the franchise's return just as quickly, due to Nintendo's stubbornness in properly pushing the IP forward. So, open up your G-Diffusers and let loose your Nova Bombs, cause it's time to find out what happened to Star Fox Zero. As stated earlier, Fox McCloud was in a long slump after Namco's campaign against the Aperoids, but that didn't mean Nintendo had totally given up on it, just mostly. Oh no! Around 2008, there was an attempt to bring R-Wing action to the Wii, which would have made all the sense in the world. Games like Sin and Punishment 2 controlled like a dream with the Wii Remote and IR sensor, but for whatever reason, it didn't coalesce into a robust game. Shigeru Miyamoto, you may have heard of him, explained in an interview with Wired in 2014 why this pitch never quite took off. Ha <laughs> ha! Getting in there with the aviation puns, I love it. Oh, sorry. We originally began working with Star Fox back on Wii, and we had a small group of people experimenting with it for many years. Maybe about six years, but we didn't find an idea that really brought that together for the Wii. So instead, we moved experimentation to the Wii U using some of the same assets. It's been maybe six to ten months that we've been experimenting with it. While it's almost unbelievable to think that a team working for six years couldn't come up with a solid game design, you have to remember that the Star Fox series always strive to introduce something new with every entry. Star Fox 2's teams and persistent map, 64's expanded selection of vehicles and multiplayer, assaults, ground-based levels, and whatever it was that commanded. So, considering this is Nintendo, it's not super shocking that they didn't want to bring it back if they didn't have a new spice to bring to the table. Where's the flavor? Where's the flavor in this? I don't taste anything. Therefore, when development moved over to the Wii U, it was immediately cursed with the idea that it must use every single facet of the console, regardless of whether it was a good idea or not. Not only that, remember that this was around the time when Nintendo was desperately throwing stuff at the wall to see what would stick, which almost usually never sticks. Three of these wall-splattered destined ideas were shown to the press at E3 2014, all of which were apparently the brain children of Mr. Miyamoto. There was Project Giant Robo, Project Guard, and Star Fox Zero. For those who've wiped this area of their mind palace clean, Project Robo had you clunkily swinging your limbs around as giant bulbous robots, while Guard tasked you with defending a base as multiple sentry turrets from an invading force. Star Fox, however, saw you controlling an R-Wing from a, shall we say, unique perspective. To shoot and aim at enemies, you needed to hold the Wii U gamepad up at the screen, like you were holding the throttle of a ship, while simultaneously pressing buttons to shoot. While not in the demo, the game was also planned to exclusively use the gamepad for other side missions whenever prompted. It was a confusing array of control schemes and screens, but unlike other Nintendo fare like Splatoon, there was no option for an alternative setup. 
Star Fox Zero's controls were brought up as a concern by Time Magazine, to which Miyamoto shrugged off in his usual manner. One of the things that stood out to me about the new Wii U and gamepad functionality is that it took a while to get used to and I'm still not sure I got it. Is there an intentional learning curve there? Yeah, I think that's safe to say. When we develop a game, I wind up playing it for many hundreds of hours, and so because of that, I tend to get a little further away from the experience people have when they're playing it for the first time. But that's something we always pay attention to when we're developing the game, and in this case, I think Star Fox will be a game you spend a little bit of time getting used to the controls, but once you do, then you'll understand what's fun about that experience. I don't think it'll take a lot of time for people to get used to it. For most people, it'll take 30 minutes to an hour. So from that standpoint, it's not a game that's particularly well suited to displaying at a show like this, where you only have a short amount of time to play. So that's why we held the event yesterday, to get everyone in to play for a longer period of time than they might normally. Unfortunately, the feedback from that press-only session, along with Nintendo of America's Treehouse, cited the controls as a problem, no matter how much time people spent with it. And it's tricky to learn the controls right away, because they do take some, taking, uh, some getting time to get used to. Right. Since you've got to learn to fly with one stick and then aim around with the gamepad, and so it's like, you, it's just a whole thing. It was simply not as accurate or satisfying having to juggle around the gamepad and look at both screens. The Wii U already had problems getting its gimmick across, and Star Fox Zero compounded the idea even further, taking an already complicated device and making it even more complicated, when all anyone wanted to do was just shoot weird space centipedes. Is that you, Slippy? With that said, fortune favors the bold. Like back in 2000, Alien Resurrection, the, the, the game, not the movie. It was heavily criticized for a control scheme that almost every publication epically shit on. If none of you ever played it, let me set the stage. You aimed your gun with the right control stick and you moved your character with the left one. Bizarre, I, I know. Nintendo then figured people just needed to get used to it, and since they had only been working on the game for less than a year, there was plenty of time for that yet. Speaking of time, Star Fox Zero, a name that would indicate to most that this was a prequel, was very much not. It was a remake of Star Fox 64, which in itself was more or less a remake of the original Super Nintendo Adventure. Now while other developers like Namco and Rare push the IP's overall narrative forward and introduce new characters, Zero remains slavishly devoted to 64, which just so happened to be the one entry Miyamoto had the most input on. This was still rather strange because the 3DS remake of 64 had just released a few years prior, so it was still fresh in most people's minds. Now, while I can't find a direct answer as to why they remade it again, the explanation most likely comes down to Miyamoto being in overall control of the project. He is credited as the producer and advising director after all. Shiggy has a long and well-documented history of not placing story high on his list of priorities, often requesting narrative content to be cut or de-emphasized from certain games he feels doesn't need them. Star Fox Zero is very much one of those games. Leave me alone! While it's true the saga of the Lilat Wars has 95% of the time been contained within the cockpit of some vehicle, and that doesn't lend itself to many narrative opportunities, fans still felt that it was disappointing that this new entry was not going forward in any sort of story capacity. Now, Nintendo pegged the game for a holiday 2015 release date, because by that time the Wii U needed all the help it could get. To expedite this process, the small team within Nintendo would need outside help to get the mission completed. This is because a lot of NCL's internal teams were either working on Breath of the Wild or other projects coming down the pike for the Switch. Therefore, who better than the studio who, in 2013, had asked Nintendo permission to include a Star Fox homage in their own game featuring a leggy witch mommy. 
Platinum Games and Nintendo co-developed Star Fox Zero from then on out, with most of the design, controls, and overall direction coming from Nintendo, while Platinum handled things like cutscenes, assets, and boss fights. Now, while both companies make vastly different games, you'd think the butting of heads would often occur, but because this was a Nintendo IP and Miyamoto was at the helm, there wasn't much in the way of friction. This is especially true because Hideki, please unblock Matt on Twitter, Kamiya, was not part of the staff. Despite the prolific Windex enthusiast stating several times he wanted to work on a Star Fox title, his duties at the time, such as producing several other projects and having his hands very full with Scalebound, check it out if you haven't, meant he simply couldn't take on another game. Kamiya, of course, is famous for making drastic pivots if he feels it's better for the game in the end. Unhappy with Resident Evil 2? <laughs> Start over! Feel like RE4 is deviating too sharply? Turn it into Devil May Cry! Sega doesn't want their main character wearing glasses? Well, tell them to fuck off! Who knows what would have happened if Kamiya had been sitting in the Great Fox's command seat, but rest assured, it would have been interesting. In his place was Yusuke Hashimoto, the director of Bayo 2 and Nintendo's Yugo Hayashi, this being his first and only directing credit. However, despite both companies working in tandem, it didn't stop Star Fox Zero from getting delayed, which happened to be a pretty significant one. Nintendo had given a nebulous holiday 2015 date, and by September, they still hadn't nailed it down, so that's when they announced it was going to fly by 2015 entirely, and would instead swoop into stores in April of the following year. They then took the time that March to remind people that Project Guard was still a thing, and would now be Star Fox Guard, an extra mode where Slippy was in charge of defending bases from wave and wave and wave and wave of rampaging robots. While novel in its concept, Captain Toad this was not. <laughs> As for the cause of this almost seven month delay, feedback from both Nintendo's Treehouse and E3 2015 was loud and clear. People weren't getting used to the controls. According to a source I spoke with, NCL did not want to budge on this, feeling that the control scheme was going to be the main selling point. This is horrible. They did make some concessions though, allowing you to control the R-Wing with the sticks, in addition to aiming with the gamepad gyros, but still would not implement a traditional optional setup. Changes were also applied to the pacing, speed, and difficulty, as originally, Miyamoto wanted to offer the game in small, episodic chunks, emulating TV shows like Thunderbirds. Internally, many felt this slowed the game's pace way down and along with the overall speed of the action, everything was then smoothed down and refined. That's right everyone, in case you haven't realized it yet, Star Fox's big return to console gaming was way worse before it released. Unfortunately, it still missed the mark in the end. Zero's reviews in both North America and, well, the rest of the world were pretty savage, keeping it neck and neck with the franchise's worst reviewed game, which was, uh, Assault. What? People didn't want a ton of on-foot missions in a space shooter? I don't believe it! Sales-wise, Zero has the distinction of being the worst selling entry in the history of the entire series in Japan. And while worldwide sales numbers were never released, several sources have claimed it never even shot down 1 million targets, which for a Nintendo first party game is pretty depressing. But to be fair, of the 13 million Wii U sold, a sizable percentage of those had probably been sold back to GameStop or whoever wound up taking them. Shigeru Miyamoto, while a legend and responsible for some incredible titles, as well as guiding some second party efforts to great success, really seemed to be holding Star Fox Zero back with certain ideas. If the controls were not ideal, then it would have at least been great to see new characters or a storyline emerge. If that wasn't possible, it would have been equally as awesome for it to play in a more traditional manner. It really brings to mind Nintendo's similar behavior when it comes to another franchise featuring fast, high-powered vehicles that has long been mistreated, and one that fans have politely asked to be brought back. Nintendo! 
You can't keep me a Mario Kart DLC hell forever! Give me a new F-Zero game, you f- If they don't have some grand, innovative idea, then it's apparently not worth pursuing. And while it's great to keep things fresh, if you haven't had a new entry in a particular series for decades, well, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Just giving the games a fresh coat of HD paint, storyline, and adding in some online features is all you really need. But Matt, you scream, Star Fox Zero is one of the last games that hasn't been ported to the Switch. Surely it'll be next. Oh, okay, well, let, let's check in with Platinum CEO Etsushi Inaba on the matter. To be honest, we wouldn't have the slightest clue. Star Fox Zero was a bit of a special case for us. Star Fox was, you know, an IP that Nintendo has had way before we entered the picture. That was a game that we were interested in making and kind of just lent out an offer to us. Hey, would you like to work on this with us? As far as the future of any ports or whatever are concerned, no conversations have come our way. I don't think it's something we would be involved in, to be honest. He said this only last year. And while that's not definitive and Nintendo could be working on it in-house, it's not looking especially good at this time. Star Fox Zero very much seemed like the wrong game on the wrong system at the wrong time. But if it did make its way over to the Switch, being able to focus on a singular screen and have optional gyro controls, well, it would be an ideal way for people to re-experience it. But as of right now, it doesn't seem like it's in Nintendo's plans. Can't let you do that, Star Fox. If you know of any other games or movies featuring horrible slash cute animals that went awry, let me know in the comments below, over on my Twitter, or fly through the rings of the Flophouse VIP Patreon and become my General Pepper to order me what to take on next. See you next time and thanks for watching.